am excited to take you all today into my kitchen to show you how I wallpapered one wall in my kitchen using Scott Living Paintable Wallpaper. I got this at my local Lowe's Home Improvement Store. Same wallpaper I used to do the bookshelves in my home office. It looks like tin. I love the embossed raised design on it. These are the tools that you need, not a lot, and also you need a good place to be able to soak that roll of wallpaper as you're cutting your strips. You could use a kitchen sink, a bathtub, or you could use a wallpaper tray. Here I'm removing the outlet covers and I keep my screws with those so I don't misplace them. And then after I'm through removing all of those, I am going to wipe down the countertop with one of my all-time favorites and it's Mrs. Meyer's basil scent and it does a fantastic job of cleaning, getting rid of the dirt and the grease and the grime. And I want my countertops clean because I'm going to be laying some of those cut out strips of wallpaper on them and I don't want that to interfere with how well the wallpaper adheres to the wall. Next, I'm removing everything from on top of the kitchen cabinets. Don't you love watching videos in Fast Forward? Don't you wish we could really get our work done that quickly? Well, on second thought, maybe not. That would be more time to do more projects, which would mean more work. Here I'm giving my copper kettle a good clean. And here are a few more tools that you might need to complete this project. Now it's time to give the walls and the top of the cabinets a good clean. Being in the kitchen, cooking creates a lot of grease and grime on your walls and on your cabinetry. Ugh, isn't that gross? <laughs> If you don't use a Windex, you may want to think twice about that and start using it. It does an excellent job, not only cleaning glass, countertops, but the grease off of your cabinet. It's time to measure the walls and the wallpaper to see what length I need when I cut them in strips. Comes with instructions. Here I am marking off the lines for my first strip of wallpaper. I'm diverting a little bit from the instructions by starting in the corner and I'm doing that because the paper is all white. I'm going to start in the corner above the cabinet and then I'm going to go below the cabinet and from left to right. Always measure and use a level for straight lines. I labeled the top of each cut of wallpaper so there would be no confusion when it came time to adhere the paper to the wall. Here's the first piece of wallpaper and I'm doing a dry run because I want to make sure that the piece that I cut fits in all of the corners and around all of the edges of wood just precisely before we put it in the tub of water. Use whatever water temperature the instructions call for and only submerge the wallpaper roll for the amount of time that it says on the instructions. When you're pulling it up out of the water, pull it up slowly and be sure and book the insides of the paper together against themselves. That holds the glue into place, keeps it from drying out until you're ready to go straight to the wall with your piece of paper. The first piece went into place beautifully and I'm using the smoothing tool to smooth out any air bubbles that get trapped underneath the piece of paper. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on this because that would force paste around the edges of the paper and you don't want to do that. I'm also using a roller tool that you'll see here in a minute. Anywhere that you have seams, which is two pieces of paper butting up together, you want to use that roller tool to make sure that you lay those seams down nicely. There are wooden rollers and plastic rollers. It really doesn't matter which one you use. Again, just push firmly, but not too terribly hard. Here I am measuring for the next strip of paper and I have a really odd kind of challenging template to make. I love this paper. It worked out great. It's strong paper. It's very thick paper and it didn't tear really while I was working with it. So that's uh, an awesome thing that I like about this paper because some papers do tear easily. I'm smoothing out with my hands as I go just a little bit and, and do be careful because although this is thick paper, it can tear. So you just, you don't want to go um, too harshly with the paper, um, but you do want to make sure that it gets into the places that you need it to under the edge of the window seal, around your outlets. And again, use that smoothing tool to remove bubbles. 
Here is the before and after. That is the green that used to be on the kitchen wall. And then that's the new color that uh, I painted. It's kind of a buttery, creamy color. A huge difference that it made in the feel of the kitchen. It made it so much more light and airy. I'm continuing to work my way across the kitchen from left to right, starting at the top and then going directly below to the bottom because I want vertical matching pieces of wallpaper. I continue to use the roller on all of the seams of the wallpaper to make sure that those adhered well to the wall. And I use the smoothing tool because that was great, not only to get the bubbles out, but as you can see there, it's good for making those edges stick in corners. You want to be sure those stick. Any excess paper on the edges or in corners can be removed with a straight edge and a blade. So happy to say that I am through papering. I absolutely love it. It is exactly what I've had in mind for a long time. I did not want to spend a lot of money. So let's talk for a minute about budget decorating. This truly was budget decorating. The wallpaper was less than $19 and it is some of our favorite people, Property Brothers, inspired wallpaper. I actually used wallpaper like this years ago in a kitchen that I did. It's funny, a little bit of time can pass and things will come back around again full circle. So this is a beautiful wallpaper. It is a wallpaper that would look fantastic in a farmhouse, modern farmhouse, French country, traditional, transitional, it's a beautiful, timeless paper. It looks like 10 tiles to me. I love it. You can paint it, actually. I'm gonna leave mine white, but you can paint it. It's washable. It comes pre-pasted. I love that I only had to submerge it in water for five seconds, and then you take it out of the water and it only takes five minutes to book, and that means when you let the glue set up so it will stick properly to the wall. So I did this entire kitchen wall for under $20 and it is a beautiful look. You can't beat that. Here's one last look before we put everything back in place. Well guys, what did you think? Please leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.